All right, here we're going to look at some of the details of what goes into some of these protocols. In particular, uh, TCP, IP, HTTP, those. All right, to start off with, we will have our example of KennyJeff.com. Okay, so we already looked at this in a previous video that you can look in the network view in Firefox and you can see the request that was actually sent. This information here and the response that came, which is the file itself. Okay, let's take another view of it in our terminal. I'm going to telnet to a particular kennyjeff.com. Okay. And kennyjeff.com will turn into an IP address to a particular computer. And the way um, the TCP works is you also have to specify a port. So over here we see that it was connecting to this IP address and after the colon here is a port and you can actually put that on your URL and the default is 80 so if you just put 80 generally um, it'll be just the same as normal okay but I want to connect to port 80 with my telnet which I can do with uh, okay the host and then the port Okay, so now I'm connected to kinnyjeff.com and I'm ready to send my request. And there's a particular rules that we're supposed to follow. And here is an example of what we're supposed to type. Okay, so I'm going to get, I'm going to get some file. And so you specify get. I don't know if the caps matters or not, then there's a space. And then we're specifying what's the name of the HTML file we want. We're using HTTP version 1.1. And this is the host that we're asking for. So this will be kinnyjeff.com. Okay, so I'm going to type get slash. And I believe this is index.html. It's what's actually coming up here. Okay, so that did not... Let's pause the video for a second. Okay, I think I just too much, took too much time there. All right, so we're connecting, and then we're supposed to get slash index.html HTTP slash 1.1 host is kinnyjeff.com Enter, and then another enter. All right, so that actually sent back the HTML file. Let's go back up and see exactly what it sent. Okay, so here I typed host guinea Jeff, and this is the response, HTTP 1.1. 200 is a code that means okay. There's the server and jinx, the date that this is coming, and that is some time zone. Um, it's HTML and some information about the connection and finally the actual HTML file comes through and it's just sitting there waiting um, this telnet program it lets me send information to the kinnyjeff.com and it's just waiting for me to type something else to send over there and we're going to control D to end the input and it didn't like that, but such is life. Okay, so this is this is one way to see what's actually happening. That we can act, we can send the 
HTTP information. That this this is the HTTP protocol. Get is one command. There's other HTTP commands. Um, we could go over to Internet protocols. Here's HTTP. And this will be a description of HTTP. And one of the commands that we can give there is get. And there are other there are other ones as well. Post is one that will often um, be used with forms. And Right, there's others as well. Okay, so that is using Telnet. So let's just make a note. Trial, so that is with, with Telnet connecting to port 80 to see HTTP happening. All right. But HTTP is just a rule for um, text commands that you can send to a web server. The actual transmission of this data has to happen over some um, internet, some wires. Just... All right, here we are again, where we're picking up from, we had this HTTP, um, rules that allows us to send commands to a web server but those so that information actually has to be sent then um, here's a picture so suppose we're on my computer here the client it wants to send this information to the server and then the server wants to send back this information which would be the actual text of the web page and pictures and images video whatever okay so that needs to go through the internet. So we'll go to some um, router and then some other router and switch and through different networks and eventually to wherever the server is and the server's message will come back on some path as well. So there needs to be some mechanism for the client to tell the next computer, I want to send my message eventually to this person. Please send it forward. All right, and the server also needs to have the same mechanism to, to send a message. It's going to go to this device here first, and that device is supposed to forward it along to somebody that's closer to the client and um, preserve, uh, preserve the data. But the, um, in general, the data may not arrive correctly. It's possible that there could be um, this, this computer here decides to send it, uh, this way, but then something happens along the way and it doesn't work. So both the client and the server kind of want to make sure that um, that the messages actually get sent back and forth correctly. And to make that happen, there's going to be a protocol for sending this data. Rules for sending this data. You can imagine that the client would um, send something and ask the server to reply with the exact text that was just sent. Okay, so that would be a duplication protocol. Client sends this request, server receives it, sends back the same exact request, and then when the client gets it back, the client knows that the message went through. If the client never gets the message back, it didn't go through. Okay, that's a pretty wasteful protocol. Um, note, um, so TCP protocol is supposed to be reliable and um, supposed to have data arrive in the right order and correct and both sides should know it was okay. Okay, so TCP is going to be some rules 
for how to make that happen. Um, the first attempt at such a protocol might just be to always echo messages you receive. Send them back. Back. Um, and the sender will know that it came through. But this is wasteful. Right? You'd be sending twice as much information as you need to. And there's other problems too. Other issues to deal with. how to split the data up. So it's not going to be the case that you could take, let's say the server is going to send a one gigabyte file and the client's trying to download. It's not going to be the case that you can simply start sending it and it will go through and all of these intermediate um, switches and routers and servers will just maintain the connection continuously for you for an hour while it downloads. That just doesn't happen. So we're going to have to split the data up. And then we're going to have to have a way that the server splits it up and then the client knows how to reconstruct it. And that's also going to be part of TCP. Okay, so this KinneyJeff.com was our web page. We had our Telnet example where we could see the command that was coming from the web browser and the response that was going to the web browser. Now we can see, um, we can use this TCP dump to see how it's actually broken up. Okay. Uh, let's see, TCP dump. Okay, so I just told the computer that any messages coming from KinneyJeff.com, I want to print them, and I'm printing them in ASCII and hex, and anything coming on this internet device. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and let's start that over and load this page. Uh, and I'm going to save the output to a file. Okay, and then let's look at that file. And each line here with a date code is showing one TCP packet. So information was broken up into different chunks called packets, and those came through and we we're printing them. Um, on the top here is some information about the packet, and then here in the middle, this hexadecimal output is the raw data itself, and some of it is text data and some of it is not. Over here, this is displaying any of it that's text um, it's displaying it. Okay, so this one up here, um, it's not obvious right away what it is, but over here we can see an HTTP response. The server and Jinx that we saw in the Telnet session. Here we see it inside of a packet, and there's just some of the header. See, it stops. And then we're into another packet with no text, no text, no text, and actually, so it doesn't look like text at all there until we get to the end where I disconnected. But let's go back up to the top.
So if we look inside of this header here, the encoding is gzip, which means it's actually sending a zipped HTML file. Let's do something else. I'm going to have one tab there to get the dump, and I'm going to have another tab to do the telnet. Okay, and we'll stop this. All right, so now Telnet was the thing that was asking. So Telnet is asking for the file now rather than Firefox. When we looked at Firefox over here in the tools, in the network, when Firefox asks with the get, one of the request headers, so this is information that was sent, says that it can handle a gzip file. We don't want the file to be gzipped because we want to see what it actually looks like. All right, in my telnet, I'm sending a request and this is all I sent. I did not tell it that I can handle a gzip file. Now let's see what the output looks like. Okay. Here is a header. So this has the similar information as the response from the server, except we're not going to see gzip as the content encoding. So there's no gzip, and then we start to see HTML here. Okay, there's HTML. There's HTML for a while. And then it stops in the middle. This is, this is in the middle of the HTML file. It's not actually done. And it picks up again here in the next packet. So it's splitting it into packets of a certain size. And... Let's just take a look here at the information that's displayed. So here's a date. This is an IP address, and this is I believe that's the that's the IP address of kinnyjeff.com that's sending the file, and it's sending it from uh, this port. So the HTTP port, that's port 80, and it's sending it to my computer, which is on this, this is a, um, that's a name for where I am right now, and then I'm receiving it on this port, port 65092, um, flags, um, and then, so there's some information here that we can um, understand once we look at the protocol more, but then it says the length of the packet is 1440. And let's just see what the length of the other packets look like. So it's using 1440 as the size of a packet until probably it's done. Uh, no. And there's some other smaller packets in here as well. Okay, all right, so it's definitely, we can see that it's breaking it up. And then what does this other stuff mean? So we can see where the actual information starts. This is the HTTP text that was sent to the web browser. That's where the text starts at that part right there. And that corresponds to this hex right here, each 
two digits in hex corresponds to one ASCII character. So these two dots that are not displayable is 0C, F1. Let's take a look at what this might, what this all might mean. So from here on up is some kind of non-text data having to do with the TCP packet. Let's take a look at the TCP packet. Okay, we'll go up to this link about the Internet Protocol Suite and click on TCP. There's a description here that you can read. I want to get to the, the picture. So this picture here says what's going to be in that um, with the, this information, so this is called the header here, the part that's before the text, the actual data. So the data is the, the text that's going to the browser, and then this is the header that's talking about how it was sent. All right, let's look through. So first we see a source port and destination port. And the source port is 16 bits. So the first 16 bits would be these two. And this is hex. So if we convert 26 hex to decimal, Okay, we're going to go ahead and call that in for now. So there's um, there's more information in the header here. We will um, look at what that looks like in the next another video. Uh, more details about what these headers look like. Um, so this is the. I mean, what you should be thinking of is this is the actual. This is what the operating system is actually going to send out the network. Um, card and so you have this information about um, how it's going to be sent. It's sent, broken up into chunks. We can already see that. There's some information here about how to send it and make sure that it is sent um, correctly and in the right order. You see a sequence number here so that's going to be used for uh, making sure it's in the right order. There's a, an acknowledgement number and that's going to make sure that um, it's sent, uh, sent and received. Um, we'll look at more of the details of that in another video.